Hello people, uh, just a quick video about uh, Take Care. I'm going to show you um, a video of me cleaning or attempting to clean some cassette heads. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, as I mentioned in my recent video about um, take format, oh sorry, uh, music formats, um, tapes are now very, very temperamental and it is worthwhile just considering if you've got tapes um, how you're going to play them because it's very rewarding to be able to play them but um, the the only thing is that you know it, it it just gets harder and harder all the time to find decent hardware and what have you to play them on so a word or two about the hardware uh, when I was 12 I think for Christmas um, I was given a tiny little portable mono cassette player. Uh, I think it was the first time I'd ever used a cassette. And it was actually quite good. Um, I quite enjoyed it. I absolutely loved, you know, from then on, I just, I just fell in love with the audio cassette. Okay, and one of those, provided it's been well looked after, will play your cassettes quite nicely. Um, they won't make very good recordings. Uh, I spent ages, I, I think I must have spent about two years wandering around with a cassette player trying to annoy every single person, trying to make recordings of things and trying to record stuff off the telly and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, give me a break. I was only about 13 or something. So, um, so yeah, they, they won't make very good recordings, but, you know, fine. Um, when we're talking about hi-fi or quasi hi-fi cassette decks uh, which is probably the most sensible option these days if you've got tapes and you can pick these up on eBay for a song so you know don't sort of balk and think oh my god you know this is going to cost me an awful lot of money because it isn't uh, a few years ago I sold a Yamaha cassette deck uh, it was a really nice one as well a K580 SE or something like that I think it was called um, and it went for about 25 quid so um, yeah it's, it, it's, it won't cost you the earth to um, to actually uh, buy one of these um, they're very hard um, to uh, buy on eBay and know that it's been well maintained I'm quite lucky in that um, up the road from me I've got a uh, a second-hand hi-fi shop where they do actually uh, do repairs and that sort of thing so um, you can um, you, you know that you can sort of buy second-hand stuff there knowing that it's been reconditioned and repaired and, and what have you and knowing that the, the guys are good in there and they'll take back stuff and um, you know give you another example if what you've bought is is, is not working properly so um, that's probably quite a good place to go. Uh, those, those sort of second-hand hi-fi shop sort of things, they're you know, a good place to go. Um, when we actually talk about the kind of machine to play your stuff on then, we're talking about a hi-fi deck. Now, um, in the 80s, when cassettes became extremely popular, um, an, also, an, an awful lot of convenient things were put onto tape decks which at the time, you know, you, you use these things and you think, oh, wow, you know, I'm really in the, in the 20th century, guys. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, you know, it, but ultimately, the more gizmos that go onto a piece of hi-fi, the, um, the less money of the budget for building the thing is being spent on the actual thing that plays the tape, okay? Um, the tape mechanisms need to be very robust. Okay, you need to have that wheel. The, there's, a, there's a little wheel in there called a, a, a pinch wheel. Okay, that needs to play. That needs to rotate round at the exact right speed of one and seven eighths of an inch per second all the time for it to be able to uh, give faithful playback that doesn't wobble around and um, burble. Okay. Um, if your tape player is starting to wobble around and burble, or if it sounds dull, or if the stereo position alters slightly so that the vocals aren't sort of more or less dead center on a modern uh, stereo recording, um, then 
you are sort of you know you're, you you need to clean your cassette heads really that that that's the main thing that's a good place to start but um auto reverse um twin tape high speed dubbing and um the sort of search mechanisms where um, in the 80s when CDs came out they tried to sort of make a, a sort of cassette version of the, of the skipping a track um, sort of facility where the um, the machine would go into sort of like a cue and review mode you'd hear a burbling while you, you were fast forwarding or rewinding the tape and it would find the nearest blank space um, and so it, it made it sort of slightly easier to find the song you're after if you're just after playing a specific track on the tape. But all those things um, are um, sort of, you know, they're detrimental to the actual integrity of the, of, of the mechanical system inside there. If you've got the choice of spending in, well, let's, let's go to the 80s, shall we? £149. That probably wasn't a bad ballpark price for a cassette deck now for 145 quid you could probably buy something like my nad cassette deck that's a very very basic deck um two head and uh no facilities to speak of apart from fast forward and rewind um not that search facility for a start no auto reverse or anything like that no remote control or you could buy one that's got all of that lot on it OK, and I bet you that my NAD has a far more uh, robust and long lasting tape mechanism than some of those decks that had um, all, all, all those facilities on it, in particular high speed dubbing. Um, I don't know what it is with um, the industry as such. Um, it just assumes that people are just perhaps very impatient, but I really can't see what the advantage is of wanting to copy a cassette at double the speed um, uh, or, or double the playback speed. I really can't see what the advantage is. If you like the music enough, you'll copy it um, and listen to the music at the same time. Okay. Um, In the last video, I said that um, that high tapes, high tape speeds on reel-to-reel -reel decks were, you know, the highest, the higher quality option. And I don't want to sort of confuse people or muddy the waters here. Um, in order for that premise to be true, the higher the tape speed, the better the quality. In order for that to be true, you have to record and play it back at the same speed. Okay. Um, the, um, the, the high speed dubbing option meant that when you were playing back a tape and recording it onto another cassette, um, the playback deck was recording at a burble, um, not at, you know, uh, the speed that the thing was recorded at, okay? Um, because of that, any hiss that was on the cassette was was sort of like doubled in, in frequency, as it were. Um, and the other, um, the, the, the actual deck that's doing the recording was um, also going at sort of, you know, double the speed, as it were. And it was just creating a mess, okay? Um, so I, I would just avoid it, okay? It really didn't work very well. Um, auto reverse decks, I found, um, tended after a little while to, um, sort of sound better on one side of the tape than the other side. An auto reverse deck, um, it, it, it I, 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 I don't I don't really know the reason why but um, with any auto reverse deck that I found I found one side of the cassette or one side of the, of the tape head deteriorating much quickly much more quickly than the other side okay um, and uh, yeah I um, ended up taking you know even within a year I ended up having to take um, a ghetto blaster that I brought back I, I bought once I had to take that back to the shop 
and leave it in the hands of um, a well-known um, sort of electrical chain in this country that rhymes with Ruby Murray's, but I won't say it. Um, and they kept it for weeks and weeks and weeks, returned it back, nothing done to it, and, uh, you know, ended up having to go through the whole rigmarole again. Um, so avoid auto reverse, okay? Um, anything that is that is doing something other than playing or recording onto the tape, avoid it, okay? All right, now that means I've got on for now 10 minutes. Um, I will just give a slight um, health warning about um, the video that's going to follow. Um, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is fine for cleaning back tape cassettes, okay? Do not try and clean a video cassette recorder using the same method because you'll ruin it totally. So, you know, video cassette recorders, I know they weren't the last word in quality, but they, you know, it, they're sometimes a useful thing to have. And, uh, you know, they're, they're very, very hard to get now, at least decent working examples are. Um, there are ways of cleaning um, a, a video cassette um, and proprietary ways and sort of, you know, homegrown methods. Don't use any kind of fluid or cotton bud on them at all. Okay, because it just doesn't work. Okay, the same is true as well um, of digital cassette recorders. Um, I even found a few of those. There's some going on eBay at the moment. Um, probably more than I wanted to pay for one because I have no real need of one. Um, but yeah, um, there there are some. Don't try and clean one of those the way that I've just shown you either and don't try and use um, there are things called tape demagnetizers as well which um, sort of uh, get rid of any magnetic residue that's on the record head um, and uh, yeah um, don't try and use one of those on a DCC machine either so yeah um, it's slightly badly filmed I'm afraid because of just bad light and um, Th this cassette machine being black, those of you that uh, know a little bit about photography will know how difficult it is to get um, something that's black to be, you know, to show up clearly on, on a thing, but I've done my best. All right, okay, I will stop ranting right this minute. Bye-bye. I'll do my best to try and show you how to clean these heads. Okay, um, first of all, remove any tape that's in there. All right. Now, here's the door, closed like that. Sorry, you can hardly see it. All right, open up the, the thing. Now you should be able to remove the door. So it actually comes off like that, okay? And it gives you a better view of the tape's innards. Okay, now to clean this, I'm going to be using just an ordinary cotton bud, like that, okay? These are actually dangerous if you stick them in your ears, even though that's what they're sold for. So kids, don't stick them down your ears. Much better used for uh, cleaning a cassette. Because uh, a lot of people will tell you that the cassette sounds terrible, and, that, and actually what they're doing is they're playing it on a, on a machine that hasn't had a clean for 30 years. And with cassettes being as temperamental as they are, um, especially these days, you know, if, if they've been sitting around for 15 or 20 years or something like that, then, um, yeah, you, you need to keep them clean. So, all right, this is a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, okay? Has to be isopropyl alcohol. At a pinch, if you really are stuck, you're desperate to play a cassette and you know your heads are dirty, then a little bit of your own spit or saliva um, will also do the trick, okay? But don't use anything else, okay? Um, saliva apparently has got a detergent in it. It's why once a herd of cows that got into um, my garden managed to uh, lick the uh, the paint off a car that was there, that was parked there. So that was many years ago, people, when I actually had the luxury of a garden. Anyway, so what I'm doing is squeezing on to one end 
of this cotton bud just a few drops of isopropyl alcohol if you buy this stuff you can buy it for a few quid from the chemists and you can get a lot more than this this is a this is a luxuriously labeled tape cleaning fluid but it's basically isopropyl alcohol you can buy it from a chemist and you only need a few drops this bottle will last forever okay so now the idea is that now that the doors come off, I've got a nice sort of gap here. Now, if I can move the camera, I might be able to show you uh, exactly what we're looking for in here. And I don't suppose I should have wetted that cotton bud first. All right, so I'm going to have to remove the camera from the tripod. All right, so off comes the camera from the tripod. Don't tell me this is badly filmed. I know it's badly filmed, all right? Okay, so, yeah, it's... It's not going to want to show you. Let's see if I can open the door and see if I can get inside. No, it's, it's just bad light, okay? Okay, I will tell you what you're looking for then. Let's plop this back on the tripod. Right. The heads in a, in a tape player are two metallic blocks okay one is the record head and one is the play no sorry I, I lie okay one is the erase head which is essentially a whack and great magnet and um, one is the play head okay now the play head is a silver thing and it's usually in the middle of the assembly okay so what you do, let's see if I can go. I'm just going under here, if you can see, okay? And I'm finding this metal block. And all I'm doing is having a prod around there with the wet end of my cotton bud and just giving it a little bit of a, a rub, okay? only takes a few moments okay and you won't actually see anything come off it but you will hear a difference okay um, tapes being played on a on a machine that needs a clean um, tend to sound rather dull um, I also noticed the, the stereo image going off um, to one side a little bit um, cleaning the cassette heads uh, really does um, sort of help that, okay? Now isopropyl alcohol dries very quickly, but use the other end anyway and give it a little dry down, okay? Being careful not to get any cotton wool on the end of this cotton bud onto the actual assembly. You don't want to do that, okay? Right, actually I wonder if moving this down a wee bit will help. Just excuse me for a second and I'll try and do this. Um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do, there's a little wheel, a little rubber wheel in there and there's a, a metal sort of post called a capstan, okay? And that rubber wheel just needs a wee bit of a of a clean as well, just try and turn it round as you clean it. You're never going to do this perfectly. But if your cassettes haven't been cleaned, you will find that when you clean this, you'll get a wee bit of rubber, uh, sorry, a wee bit of brown muck coming off from the rubber. Okay, mine were cleaned fairly recently, so it's not going to show so much okay but it's always best especially if you're doing like a digital transfer of a tape or something like that it's always best just to give your heads a clean anyway even if you think you've done it in recording studios the heads were cleaned sort of you know every half an hour or something like that especially if they were going to begin recording an overdub or something like that it was a quick clean 
of the heads okay and I'm taking a lot longer than this actually takes okay but I'm just giving this a dry now okay all right when that's done it's slightly more fiddly to get the door back on we'll have a go let's go for it all right these doors were meant to be removed this is not something that you know you're going to invalidate or you would have invalidated your guarantee on a cassette machine for they were meant to come off there we go that's back on now okay just a little bit of gentle prodding that gets that back on okay and uh, your tapes should now start to sound as good as new says he okay all right so there's cleaning a cassette head Right, I'm back just for a moment or two. There are a couple of things I didn't say. First of all, um, I talked about um, frequency of cleaning cassettes, you know, how often you should do it. Uh, it wasn't as often as those uh, studio engineers back in the, in the analog recording days. Um, but certainly after every 10 to 15 cassettes, uh, you ought to clean your cassette heads, okay? Uh, the sound will start to suffer otherwise. Okay, uh, only takes a minute. Um, I took all my um, machine out of the um, out of its hi-fi stand and everything for the purposes of doing that. But you don't need to do that. Just um, quick uh, cassette clean a minute. That's all. You, that's all it takes. Okay. Um, yeah. Here's a tape. All right. This is a, a, a blank cassette, nice see-through one. You can see the tape spools here and here. Okay, um, and here's the view of the tape as presented to the tape heads. All right, so this plastic sort of material inside here, um, you should never touch it. Uh, you'll get your fingerprints all over it, and that won't do it any good. Um, but um, it's a sort of it's it's a sort of plasticky sort of material, and it's covered in metallic filings. Okay, now as usual, I only know sort of the real basics of these things. I don't understand the the, the full sort of uh, physics and and sort of gizmos be behind it all and the science and everything. But um, depending on your um, on how expensive your your tape is, the quality of it as well. Uh, will we'll di we'll dictate the quality. Now, this is a Type 1 cassette, okay? It's 1 in Roman numerals, okay? So it looks like a letter I. Um, uh, it's ferric oxide that's on here, okay? Um, so anything with, like, ferro or something like that on it, that, that's a Type 1 tape, and, and it will say Type 1 on it somewhere, or normal position, um, as this one is a, a normal tape, okay? Um, had I wanted to uh, spend a little bit extra extra money, I could have bought a Type 2 blank cassette. And Type 2 blank cassettes uh, were what are called chrome cassettes uh, because the material was chromium dioxide on there. Okay, Type 2, Type II in Roman numerals. Okay, uh, gave you a, a, a much clearer, more dynamic recording. And you could also, um, like in the last video that I talked about, you could also push the tape levels a lot further um, when you're recording onto them um, so that uh, you've got a much more powerful recording. Okay, um, the recording on here, I've just tried it out actually, it's rather sort of dull and, you know, but you know, the, these TDK D90s uh, were brilliant just for making basic recordings, okay, and I have got some pretty good recordings um, that I've recorded onto them. Um, so yeah, there was a Type 3 cassette, um, they didn't sell very many of them uh, and they sort of fell out of disuse because um, the tape machine has to adjust it, what it's, what's called its bias setting for them um, and later day machines did it automatically, you didn't need to think about it. Um, but uh, because they were a mixture of ferric oxide on the Type 1 machine and the chrome, um, uh, from the Type 2 cassette um, that they could never really get a, a sort of uh, optimum setting that would um, that would sort of show the 
sort of advantages of both types of material. So, um, yeah, uh, they fell out of use pretty quickly. There was a Type 4 cassette called the Metal Cassette, Type 4 IV in Roman numerals. Um, it uh, was very good quality, but most cheaper cassette decks, and I'm even talking some of the Ghetto Blasters here, they had a Type 4 setting on them, um, but they were only really uh, recommended for playback only, okay? Um, it was the, the sort of, I suppose, the, the, the top flight decks, like, you know, some of the better Yamahas and um, Akai's, do I mean Akai? Awa, Awa uh, decks, and also, you know, the legendary Nakamichi Dragon, stuff like that. Um, you know, those were, you know, optimised for recording onto metal heads, uh, onto metal cassette, but you know, for most purposes, it was redundant. It's also extremely expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, Type One and Type Two cassettes are the best thing. Now, a Type Two cassette, uh, the the metal filings on there, um, the the chromium dioxide sort of material to coat it with, um, was better at staying onto the actual <laughs> plastic tape itself. Um, these D90s, uh, these, these were better than most, but certainly in, in ye days of yore, um, like uh, the sort of WH Smiths or Boots sort of own brand sort of uh, type 1 cassette, um, the, the, the ferric oxide coating would come off um, sort of much more quickly, okay, and it's that coating on there the which is muddying up and dirtying your cassette heads because um you know a tiny wee bit of of coating comes off each time you play a cassette okay um and uh, that that's the thing that needs to be cleaned off okay um so chrome cassettes are, are your best bet if you really want to keep your tape um tape machine in um decent condition um <coughs> The layers of tape here, I don't know if you can see, you might not be able to see here, but ah, oh yeah, you, you, you can just about see here um, that um, there's a loose layer there, all right? But um, especially with pre recorded albums, which were always recorded onto sort of pretty bog standard tape, um, they did try um, in the late 80s to, to sell you tapes by, you know, um, selling you sort of better uh, formulations of tape. You know, um, there was a, they, um, they did a Type 2 cassette, which um, would also play perfectly well on the Type 1 setting, so that if you had a, a basic cassette recorder, like you know my 12-year-old Christmas present sort of thing, it would still sound okay. But the the layers tend to stick together, okay? And if you've got a tape that hasn't been played for a while, then it's always best to fast forward and rewind it right from the beginning to the end a few times, um, just so that you loosen up that, otherwise you'll get an uneven speed of playback. Um, uh, and yeah, if that doesn't work, then just a tiny, like that, yeah? Oh, you can't really see me do it, but. No, you can't see me do it, but, you know, just pretend that's the table and just do that, turn it over, just do that, knock it round a little bit and then fast forward and rewind it and that will um, also loosen up uh, the spools if they, if they get a bit stuck, okay? I hope that this video, I know it's been a long, a long one and I know that, um, yeah, um, you know, I, I do go on a bit, but I hope that that's been informative and um, long live the vinyl, uh, long live the tape cassette. Hurrah.